on a nasty day like this one, I always like to look for stocks that were able to resist the savage European undertow, which put most of our market through the usual meat grinder. I've been telling you to stick with high yielders that also give you domestic security, meaning they don't do much business overseas. Sure enough, while the averages were crushed today, B&G Foods, BGS for you gamers, is basically unchanged. B&G, if you don't remember, is one of the domestic security stocks I just recommended. You might recognize them as the company behind Ortega, our Las Palmas brand Mexican food, cream of wheat, Vermont-made syrup, pollen or fruit spreads, B&M beans, B&G pickles, among others. I like B&G for a number of reasons. First, that delicious 4.6% yield, especially versus 10-year treasuries. So this is one of the best performers of last year, up 83%. And since 2012 is looking more and more like 2011, that bodes well for the future. The company has a fabulous track record of buying neglected brands from its larger competitors and then nursing them back to health. Plus, B&G has given you about a 95% gain since I first got behind it in October of 2010. I think this is the ideal domestic defensive dividend name for this environment. But don't take it from me. Let's talk to David Wenner. He's the president and CEO of B&G Foods. Find out more about his company and its prospects. Mr. Wenner, welcome back to Mad Money. How is he? Good to see you. Thank you so much, David. Now, uh, since we talked last, You've made this acquisition, yep. and it's in a different direction. I've got all of your terrific food products, and every single person who is watching knows them. These are products that are also household names, but they're not food. And I want to know how they're doing and whether they're going to be the same kind of success. Actually, we have some that are food. Yep. Same kind of success and whether they're taking your company in a new and maybe larger direction. Well, most of the most of the acquisition are food products, but you're right. This is a household product, and it's a direction we've been looking at for a while now. Uh, and mainly because when we look at food products, we're looking at niche products that have very good margins. You know, things that we can defend against whatever competition there is. This is that kind of product on the household side of the ledger. Uh, very unique product. Almost no competition whatsoever. Very good margins. We think it's, it has a, a lot of other applications, so we, we see room for it to grow. Uh, but it's what we do, and it's the same customers, the same trucks, right. the same warehouse. You know, there's a lot of synergies there that we can take advantage of. Now, when I go into the aisle, I mean, I go into these aisles, it's obvious, Spice Aisle, you got McCormick in there, got some you know, very good names, yep. but there's room. I go into this aisle, there's a lot of little companies, and they seem to be all like mom and pop companies, or maybe divisions that big companies don't think of. There are a lot of guys in that aisle that you can take right. over, aren't there? And that's where the opportunity is, as long as it's in a niche that's yeah. defensible. Right. You know, I do not want to buy something that my competition is tied. You know, I mean, I have great okay. respect for Tide's right. power, and that's not what we well, do. But, but this is against McCormick. It is, but it's in a very defensible niche. Mrs. Dash controls 80% of the salt-free seasoning and has for a long, long time. McCormick has competing products that haven't made headway. So we looked at that and said, that's got a very loyal following, very defensible, even though McCormick is the 800-pound gorilla right. in seasoning. And uh, no one up against the uh, no-stick baking? Because I know well, there's Pam, a lot of competition Pam is in there. there and I've, that's a household name. I, was, I had a party the other day, and the caterer said, where's your Pam? Right. Didn't say, where's so, your Baker's Joy? So, but there's not a lot of sales here. So you want to, it's glass half empty, glass half okay. full. We're looking at this and saying we can do a lot better because this is one of the original products in the category. It's done very well since we bought it. We got it into expanded distribution in Walmart. We think okay. we can do a lot with that brand. Now, uh, my friend Matt Horwin, who does my forensic accounting for me and first uh, brought your excellent company to my attention when you had the kind of the hybrid, said to me, you got to ask, you got to ask, David, did you buy too much and is the balance sheet more stressed than you would like? Did we buy too much? No, uh, one of the management challenges we have as we build the portfolio is managing all these brands. And right. we think we're up to it, and that's part of my job is to understand how to do that. The balance sheet's in actually in very good shape. Okay. We're leveraged about four times, but you really have to understand the cash flow underlying that. The interest uh, to cover that leverage is about 25% of our EBITDA and uh, very, very manageable. Yeah. And we are, we are ready today to do the next acquisition. You really are? Yes. You're not, well, you're not concerned the dividends you, you want to be getting? No, because we still have very strong cash flow. Right. And what we buy because of the very strict criteria we have is accretive immediately. Right. I mean, the, the Culver brands that we bought brought $28 million of additional cash to the balance sheet every year. We raised the dividend off of that $10 million. Okay. So we're able to raise the dividend very comfortably, still put a lot of cash flow on, uh, right. as a proportion of what we bought, 
onto the balance sheet to fund that next acquisition. I do not see any any commodities in this basket that no. are going higher anymore. Well, that's no that, and that's some that's part of the magic of B and G uh, in the last year is we don't have tremendous commodity exposure, and uh, what little we have, we've done a very good job of buying ahead against. Had to take very modest price increases to cover it, and, and we've done that. Uh, I know you guys have a great relationship with Walmart. If you get one thing in Walmart, are they listen, willing to listen in Bentonville to having you take the others, or does it happen kind of natural? Uh, Walmart's a case by case yeah. uh, thing. I mean, they, you know, uh, we're not big enough that Walmart uh, is going to really listen to us. Right. We have to tell the story for each and every one of these brands. And, and fortunately for us, they're very good brands. Uh, Baker's Joy ended up on the baking aisle in Easter, even though we had a very short fuse from when we bought it to when we got it in. Uh, you know, so we're able to do that, but it, it you know, you got to go persuade them. They're not going to just <laughs> accept it. Well, you've done a fantastic <laughs> job. The thing I'm most thrilled about is, is here that you're ready for the next one because the growth and the yield I mean your your dividend goes up and the yield goes higher not because your stock goes down but because you're growing the dividend right, right. you've done a fabulous job it's one of the most mentioned stocks when I see people in the street and I'm thrilled Wonderful. for that Dude, thank you so much for thank coming you. on the show thank you for that's me. David Winter president and CEO of B&G Foods you worried about Facebook you think worried about Morgan Stanley you're kind of up, up in the air about research and motion hey you know what just remember B and G. Stay with Kramer.